everybody, and welcome to the BlueWorks Live May 2020 release preview session. I'm Margaret Thorpe, BlueWorks Live Offering Manager, and today I'm going to be giving you an overview of the BlueWorks Live release that's coming out this weekend on Saturday, May 30th. So this release of BlueWorks Live provides an expanded BPMN 2.0 support, a significantly enhanced process playback tool, and more productive artifact management. So BlueWorks Live editors can attach up to three boundary events to an activity within their process diagrams. They can also add descriptive text to their process diagrams using text annotations. Multiple artifacts can be copied, moved, archived, restored, deleted, published, unpublished, all at the same time. And there have been many changes to the playback tool. Viewers can now access the playback tool. Up to 10 playbacks can be created for each process. End-to-end -end playbacks can be created that span multiple linked processes. Users can step through parallel paths within their process playbacks. Users can select multiple numeric properties for analysis within a playback, and they can see the cumulative values for all those properties as they step through the playback. And playbacks can be easily shared now using links or the new playback report. So let's take a look at all of this in more detail. First up, I'd like to share with you a couple of our BPMN enhancements. So today, BlueWorks Live Editors can attach a single boundary event to an activity, but we know that you often need to be able to model multiple events attached to an activity, and so we've added support for up to three attached boundary events now. And editors can drag and drop these events to different locations on their activities to improve diagram readability. Now you all have been asking for a while to have the ability to add descriptive text to your process diagrams to make them more understandable. And currently there are several mechanisms for attaching text documentation to a diagram in BlueWorks Live, but none of those are visible on the diagram itself. So we've added support for text annotations. Um, and text annotations are a BPMN 2.0 mechanism for modelers to provide additional textual information for the reader of a BPMN diagram. So the text annotation object can be connected to a specific object on the diagram with an association line, but it doesn't affect the flow of the process. So you can see an example of one of those here. Attached to the orange um, enter customer data via web page activity, text annotation objects can also be placed freestanding on process diagrams. So you can see an example of that up in the left-hand corner of the diagram. So let's take a quick look at how text annotations work in BlueWorks Live. So you can associate text annotations with activities, gateways, sub-processes, and certain types of events. And to attach a text annotation to an activity, you just right-click on the activity and select Add Text Annotation from the drop-down menu like you see here on, on the screen. And once you've created the text annotation, you can drag and drop it onto any location near the activity where the green highlights appear. So um, these green highlights you're probably familiar with already um, because these really tell you where you will find valid positions on your process diagram to move an activity or, or other element to. Um, so it's the same with, with uh, text annotations. Now you can also resize the text annotation simply by selecting it, uh, grabbing one of the corners, and dragging it to make the box larger or smaller. Now to add a freestanding text annotation to a process diagram, you right click on the background menu and select add text annotation, like you see here. Um, and once created, you can drag and drop it anywhere on the diagram where the gray bar and green highlights show up. And just as with the um, attached text annotation, you can resize these in the same way. Just grab, select it, grab one of its corners, and um, drag it to make, it make the box larger or smaller. Now in the documentation view, um, you can edit your text annotations directly in place. So, you know, for those of you that like to work in the documentation view, that's really great. Um, but you can also control whether text annotations show up or not um, in the documentation. Uh, so you can, it's at the top, for example, you see this hide all text annotations button. 
Um, so that's essentially allows you to toggle them on and off for the entire um, the documentation for the entire process. Whereas um, freestanding annotations can be hidden by toggling, you know, on the little tool right next to um, the name of the process here. And if you've got attached um, text annotations uh, that are associated with other elements in your documentation, other activities, you'll have that same little tool out to the right of those. So you have a lot of control over whether or not you want those to show up or not in your, docu in your documentation. Now, um, I just wanted to mention a couple of things related to activity numbering. So you can attach text annotations uh, to normal start and end events, you know, like this one down here. And if you do, you might want those annotations showing up in your Word export. Um, if you're, you know, exporting to Word to share with uh, coworkers and, and stakeholders. And so the activity dump numbering dialog now allows you to turn numbering on for these types of events. Uh, to ensure that they're included in your export. And you see that option here, include normal start and end events. So that's new. Um, and uh, you can take advantage of that if you have that need. And the other thing is that, um, you know, when you're viewing a diagram that has lots of attached boundary events, you may or may not want to display the activity numbering for them, um, right? Like, you may not want to clutter up your activity like this one is, right? Um, and so now you have control. You can turn off activity numbering um, just on boundary events in your diagram if you find it's uh, just too much. So that's all we've gonna, we're going to talk about for uh, text annotations, but uh, have fun with that. Um, and now let's take a look at how you can do bulk artifact management. So multi-select operations can be performed on library artifacts now. So when you need to move, copy, archive, delete, publish, or unpublish multiple spaces, processes, decisions, policies, process apps, or even user groups, at the same time you can do that from any of the library pages now. So you just select multiple artifacts using control click or shift click depending on whether they're, conti whether they're contiguous or not. And then um, open the artifact drop-down menu to the right of any of the selected uh, items and you'll get this little menu and all of the allowable operations for that set of artifacts will be enabled right so here we can see that we're, we're actually allowed to you know move copy archive or publish um, this subset of artifacts but we're not allowed to unpublish them because that would not make sense and it's not valid um, so in this example, I'm copying these three, and you can see that basically before I actually do the copy, in case you're really copying a huge number, you just get this validation dialog saying, these are the artifacts you are copying. Is this what you really want to do? Um, so that's how that works. And um, we hope that this makes the lives of our admins and, and editors um, much easier. Um, so that should be a really helpful feature. Now we've made a number of enhancements to the BlueWorks Live playback feature that I'd like to share with you now. But for those of you that aren't familiar with the BlueWorks Live playback tool, I'd like to just take a couple of minutes to give a super brief overview. Um, so essentially when you have a large complex process diagram, it can be hard to follow, right? No matter how readable and well-structured you make it. But with BlueWorks Live Playback, you can focus on specific paths through the process and you can go through them one at a time. And this makes it a lot easier for your stakeholders to review and provide feedback on your processes. So customers that use BlueWorks Live Playback, they typically use it once they have a draft process diagram that they're ready to take out for review, um, for refinement, for, for approval by other business areas. And using BlueWorks Live Playback to conduct facilitated process discovery sessions with their stakeholders, it helps them with you know, capturing and validating stakeholder perspectives and insights, um, getting everybody's you know, view. It helps all of the different stakeholders from the different business areas reach a shared understanding of how a process impacts all the different business areas. Um, and it can really help identify specific problems and pain points um, that the business is experiencing with the process. Um, and so in, this is just really in a nutshell. Um, to use the BlueWorks Live Playback tool, 
basically the first thing you do is you define the path through the process that you would like to focus on. So you'll probably have a happy path, you may have various exception paths, you may have some specific subflows that may be of particular interest to your business. And then next you select any variables that you want to focus in on. So once the paths are defined, you can assess the relative impact of alternate paths by selecting variables for analysis like cost, cycle time, value add, risk, um, things like this. And then you run the playback. Basically in BlueWorks Live you click play and you just begin stepping through the defined playback path. Um, and numeric variables are automatically incremented for you as you go and totals are available for the end-to-end -end playback and you and your stakeholders are able to see um, the progression of steps through the flow within the diagram very clearly. So after you've done that, you may want to assess and compare paths, um, you know, comparing the variables I mentioned earlier, like cost and cycle time and value add and risk um, to, to you know, help identify pain points and opportunities for improvement. And then finally, you may want to share your playbacks with coworkers and stakeholders so that they can review them and step through them themselves, right? Um, either in BlueWorks Live or, or offline. So that's playback in a nutshell. And the enhancements that we've made to it in this release, um, there are a number of them, which I'm going to go into a little more, but viewers can, can now access playbacks. You can create up to 10 now for a process. You can create end-to-end -end playbacks that span multiple link processes. Um, you can step through parallel paths simultaneously now. Um, and you can select multiple numeric properties for analysis when you're doing a playback. And you can share playbacks um, with your coworkers using links or the new playback report. So just to delve a little bit more into some of these um, enhancements, um, so Viewers can now view and run playbacks, and of course, that's consistent with uh, viewer permissions, right? So they'll only be able to do this for published processes that they have access to. Um, so you'll see a few differences when you look at the play, playback tool new, now, uh, when you first log into the new release. As you can see here at the bottom of the playback tool, um, you can have up to 10 playbacks for a process now. And if you look immediately to the right of the playback name, um, you'll see that you can enter a rich text description of your playback. And if you look at the icons out here to the right, you can export the playback report to Word. If you have a bunch of playbacks, you can export all of them to Word in one go. Um, you can copy a link to the playback. And of course, this is not new, but it's just here, so I'll mention it for people who are new to the tool. Um, you can clear the playback path here to define a new one. So, as I mentioned, you can export a playback report to Word now, um, and so you can customize that report as well. You can include and exclude properties depending on what you want to see in that report. If the playback includes link processes, you can include the playback subflow, um, the link process subflow in the rep report. You can also include a custom account-wide footer if you, there's one set up for your account. Um, so all the sorts of things that you can do with, uh, with our other word exports. Um, and here's what the first couple of pages of a playback report look like. So you've got the playback diagram right, and any diagram elements that are not part of the playback, they're faded in the background, right, so it's real easy to see um, the path that your playback traverses uh, within your process, right. And then there's a playback overview section, displays totals for any accumulated numeric properties, and there's the documentation section that gives you the details of the elements that were included in the playback. And the playback report can be a really helpful tool, I think, for comparing different paths through a process. So for example, imagine that I've been asked for ideas on how we might reduce the cost of our employee onboarding process. And to analyze it, I decided to compare the costs of orienting employees on-site versus off-site. I then went and created a playback for each flow, the on-site orientation flow and the off-site orientation flow. And then comparing the playbacks uh, made it easy to see that 
the on-site orientation is more expensive. Um, and so that may be one potential solution that I, I could propose. But you can imagine um, using playback reports in this manner uh, for any number of, of different um, business situations could be really helpful. Now, you can select multiple properties um, so that while you're in your playback, uh, you can really easily visualize and see them. Um, so you can select a single text property and any number of numeric properties, including uh, custom properties, and using this drop-down right here. And then once selected, these properties will be visible on the diagram, right? We're hovering over them, we'll, we'll show their details. And then any numeric properties will be automatically incremented and displayed at the bottom right as you step through the playback. So playback supports parallel and inclusive gateways now. Uh, previously, it only supported exclusive gateways. Um, and so while you can only choose a single flow out of an exclusive gateway, um, now you can choose to take one or more flow out of uh, the alternate flows um, out of a parallel or inclusive gateway. So when you run the playback, uh, all of the selected flows will be advanced simultaneously as you step through the playback. And in the case where there's a parallel join, like in this example here, um, the playback will not advance beyond the join until all the flows have reached the join. So in this case, we have two flows. Um, and this, uh, set, this one right here um, has reached the, the uh, I'm sorry, let's see, one, two, three. So this one here has reached the join already, um, and it's waiting for uh, this one to arrive. So essentially, uh, you'll see when, when you use it, it's really easy to, um, to, to watch what's happening as you click next and just step through it. Um, so when you're defining a playback through a process with multiple parallel flows that don't, doesn't use parallel splits or joins, um, like this one here. So, uh, you know, I, could choose to use explicit um, gateways and, and joins, but many times, you know, we'll see this kind of thing in, in our diagrams where um, there are parallel flows uh, without those elements. So in this case, uh, you can also select one or more parallel flows to include in the playback. And the behavior will be just the same. Um, when you run the playback, all the selected flows will be advanced simultaneously as you step through the playback. <clears throat> the difference being, since there's no join, they're not going to wait. So these three flows um, will just, as you step through, they will advance uh, one step at a time until they each reach the, reaches the end of its, uh, of its particular path. So you can also define playbacks that span multiple link processes now. And to do that, you just select the activity uh, that the link process, uh, that links the link process. And in this example, it's the first one I've got here, right? And you hover over this little link icon down in the lower left-hand corner of the activity box and um, click on the hyperlink that comes up. And that'll take you to the link process uh, where you can continue to define your playback. And so here you see I've just navigated into that link process and um, and I can just continue selecting my playback subflow here in this linked process. And now when I finish defining the playback subflow within this link process, I just press the parent button to continue defining the playback in the parent process. I could also click on the uh, hyperlink at the top of the page to return, either will work. Um, but an important point here is um, clearing the path when you are in a, a linked process subflow like I am here, it will not clear the entire path, meaning it won't include the parent. Um, it will only uh, clear the, the subflow that's within this particular link process. So you don't need to worry like, you know, when you basically defined a whole subflow and you realize that you made a mistake and need to do it differently and you basically clear the path, you don't need to be concerned that it's going to clear your entire playback. It's just going to create, uh, just going to clear this portion of it that's inside this uh, link process subflow. 
Now to run a playback that contains link process subflows, you just click play um, and start advancing through the playback using the next button. And the next button, when you are about to navigate to a subflow um, in a linked process, uh, the, the next button will change and you'll get this down arrow, which tells you you're going down a level into a, a, link, a link process subflow, right? Um, and, uh, and similarly, when you're in that right now, so I've gone into that link process subflow, I've continued to um, step through it, and I click next, I click next, and at this point I see um, an up arrow. And that's telling me that when I click next, my next step is going to take me back up into the parent where, where I will continue then to step through uh, my overall playback. So, so that's how um, link process playbacks work. And there are a few tips for, for the geeks that I wanted to share. Um, because if you're using playback a lot, it, they can save you a lot of time. So basically, um, so the first point is when you're defining a playback, you don't have to select one node at a time. So if you select a node and then you select another node further on in the process, BlueWorks Live will automatically select everything on the path between those two nodes for you. So that can be really handy, uh, especially when you've got big uh, processes and your flows are very long. Now, when defining a playback, uh, selecting a node adds it to the playback, like people who've used playback know that. Um, but remember that clicking on a selected node removes it from the playback. And so that's, that's really handy when you don't want to clear the whole path, right? Just the last few selections, for example. So you can just click on, on the, the last few selected nodes and they'll become unselected. Now you can make some updates to an existing playback without having to clear the entire path or deselect a whole lot of elements. And I wanted to share a couple of those situations with you because it could save you a lot of time. Um, and so in the case where the path goes through a gateway, you can easily change which path is taken out of the gateway um, by just using control click on the gateway to toggle uh, the various paths, you'll see. You know, um, and so that allows you to really quickly change it. And the other thing is if you want to change the playback to include or exclude the path within a sub-process, so not a linked process, but a sub-process, then you just control click the sub-process. Um, and that will toggle you between excluding and, inc and including the sub-process subflow inside the uh, subprocess. So if you want that detail, you know, you can just toggle it on. If you don't want it, you can just toggle it off. Um, so you don't have to go through the trouble of, uh, of selecting all that now. Um, and then finally, last thing I wanted to bring up is that, um, you know, if, if significant changes are made to a process that impact an existing playback, BlueWorks Live may need to automatically update any associated playbacks. And if that occurs, you'll get a message next time you enter playback mode. And depending on the changes that have been made, if you get this message, you may want to review the updated playback to make sure it still reflects your original intention, right? Because if you know major changes were made to the process, um, and BlueWorks Live had to figure out, you know, how to update the playback uh, based on those changes, it doesn't know how you would want to do it. It makes some assumptions, and you know, if it's significant changes you should review your playback um, to make sure that, that those changes didn't, you know, didn't do anything weird um, to, your, uh, to your playback. And then um, I know that's a lot of information since we've made so many enhancements to playback in this release. And I just encourage you to check out the playback section in the product documentation when you go to use this new functionality. Um, and of course, th these details and a video of this presentation, this can all be accessed from your What's New pop-up uh, when you log in um, on Monday to the new release. Um, you just go to the release blog link um, and you have these details along with a recording of this video. So, um, so with that, I'd like to wrap up. And um, just to quickly summarize, we saw this new release has got some you know, expanded BPMN support, um, significantly enhanced process playback tool, 
more productive artifact management. We saw that you can attach up to three boundary events now to an activity in, in your process diagrams, that you can add descriptive text uh, to process diagrams using text annotations. We saw that you can copy, delete, move, restore, archive, publish, unpublish, pretty much do everything um, to multiple artifacts at the same time really easily now. Um, and for playback, we saw that viewers can access playbacks now. You've got up to 10 playbacks. Um, you can do end-to-end -end playbacks that, that span um, multiple link processes. You, you can step through parallel paths, both with parallel inclusive gateways and without them. Um, and you can select multiple numeric properties within your playback for analysis, and you can see the cumulative values as you go and, and at the end of your playback. And you can see all of this on the new playback report, and you can share playbacks with your coworkers via links. So that is uh, gonna do it for me, and I really thank you so much for your time today, and I thank you for using BlueWorks Live. Um, take care.